Hello everyone, this is Eduardo Sorto. I'm a mechanical engineer here at Serotech, and welcome to another episode of our Tips and Tricks tutorial series. Today we'll be looking at some best practices to converting dimensions and views from a drawing environment to a PMI environment. For this demonstration, we'll be looking at the housing model. And before I jump into the drawing, just want to confirm that the model views folder at the top does not have any PMI data in them. And so at the moment, there's uh, no dimensions applied to this. There's no PMI features or uh, datums. Okay, so we'll be pulling that from our drawing environment. And so we have a drawing created for this housing part, and we want to leverage you know, all the, uh, the drawing objects, the dimensions, and GDT callouts here. So if we navigate to our drafting tools, you'll see the convert to PMI feature on the right. And this will give you uh, several options to convert your, uh, your drawing objects here. So when you check under type, uh, you can select drawing to convert the entire drawing or specific sheet, view, or annotation. For this example, we'll select view. And I want to convert these four views. But before I hit OK, I want to do a quick scan, make sure this is set on preview. So you can visually confirm that everything that's highlighted in red will be converted to your PMI environment. So if you notice here in the section B view, or, you know, this 24.6 is being, uh, it's being excluded. This 136.2 is being excluded. And this 54 at the bottom is also being excluded. So we'll have to clean up the references. It, so most of the time when this happens, it's because it's referencing a, a, a curve that should not be uh, used as a reference to that specific dimension. So it could be that it's either you know, a line has been sketched in there or it's grabbing a spline that it should not be grabbing. So a couple things you can get away with in your 2D environment that you can't get away with in your 3D environment. So we'll click cancel and run through that exercise, that cleanup exercise here. So I'll double click on my 24.6 dimension and take a look at the references on the top. So if I hit my first object, you'll notice that it's grabbing this edge here when in fact it should be grabbing this edge here. So right now it's it's computing the endpoint when we want it to compute this uh, edge here. Okay, same thing for this case. We'll zoom in. We don't want that radius. We want this edge here. So I'll check my fifty four. Do the same thing. I'll zoom into my first object. It's grabbing this edge. We want it to be the vertical edge. Cool. My second object, it's grabbing the radius. And I want it to be this, the end of that point here. I believe there's one more. Um, this 136.2. Check my first object. This is grabbing the arc center of this edge, which is which is good. That's what we want. We check our second object here. It's grabbing the horizontal curve when we want this edge instead. So I'll hit close. I'll run through my conversion process again highlight those four views, and you'll notice that these uh, you know, couple dimensions that we updated are now read and included in our um, conversion here. So a couple things we can do, we can check 
convert to PMI, or open the converted to PMI destination part. Uh, but we have that open already, so we'll leave that unchecked. And we can use a alternate target assembly if we need to as well. I will uncheck that for now. And we'll hit OK. So once this gets um, converted, you'll go to your housing part. And you'll see a couple of different new views added within this model views folder. So you'll see your ortho five view here. You'll see your right view. Notice the 136.2 was successfully converted. And a couple other section views here. So the conversion isn't always perfect. So you want to make sure you go through a validation process. You want to make sure that all your supplemental geometry have been brought in. You want to make sure that your dimensions and GD and T features have the appropriate associated objects to them. So if I come into my right view here, notice that most of this, uh, the axis and center marks have been Converted, right? We see the bolt center, center marks, a couple center lines in there. However, this center mark is missing. So we'll just do some cleanup work. Go to our PMI tab, center mark, and add that in here. Okay. So that looks good. Now, the next thing we want to do is make sure we have the appropriate uh, associated objects to our dimensions and gd and features. So, for example, this 110.3 uh, uh, dimension here should have the two faces as associated objects here. So, we'll see this face one and face two which is correct, that's, that's what we want. And it's important for those associated objects to be correct and up to date, because that's what you know, some manufacturing softwares or uh, CMM or um, you know, the, uh, the CAM softwares start uh, you know, using to verify these, uh, these models here. So this looks correct, that's exactly what we want. It's also important because once this gets converted to your, uh, your PDF, 3D PDF environment, when you click on this dimension, those faces get highlighted too. So it, if there's a lot of things going on, it's really easy to just click a dimension and immediately see those uh, references there. Okay. Same thing for this uh, datum A. We want to make sure this has the appropriate object here looks good and our feature control frame so if i double click this notice how there's no associated objects in there so in order uh, to add these faces we can come in here and select you know this face and that face here right or an easier option is if i hit escape here I can go ahead and make that associated to that linear dimension. So when I do that, double click that, they automatically get tied to those associated objects there. Okay, okay. and the very last thing is, you know, we don't want to spend Know, hours going through each view and each dimensions here. So a good way to check your associated objects is to go to File, Information, PMI, and Report. And you can run a report for all your PMI features in here. And what you'll want to take a look at is the Associated Objects column. 
So we'll want to make sure that we can, um, that all those columns or line items are filled out. And if they're not, we can go and it'll update them you know, one by one. Okay, so for example, this uh, column here, this tells us what the associated entities are for a specific dimension. You can see uh, if there's anything appended to it. You can see if there's uh, you know, features or datums associated to them, what view they lie in, and the values of those uh, dimensions as well. So we'll focus on the associated entities and you'll see this PMI feature control frame has no associated objects. So this is an example where we'll want to take a look at ortho five view and um, update this feature control frame. Nice thing about Excel is you can filter as well. So if you need to come in here and uh, filter through your uh, different data, so you can go ahead and add one in there as well. So right now we're in our section for view. So let's take a look at if we're uh, missing any objects in there. So that would be very quick scan of everything in section four. Okay. You'll notice this here. This PMI feature control frame uh, looks like a uh, positional tolerance. Does not have an associated object. So what I can do is have this toggle to the left. Look for that. It looks like it's this one here. But what you can also do is go to our add-ins and select highlight NX objects. So if you do highlight NX objects for this line, you should see that uh, on the left here. So notice that gets highlighted. So it was a perpendicular tolerance, not the uh, not the positional tolerance. So that's a good workflow to go through your different uh, conversions and work through the different uh, options here. So now I know that I want to go ahead and tie these two dimensions together. So when I click on them, I now know that these two faces are associated, right? Where it's perpendicular to one another. And this concludes this exercise. If you have any questions about what's covered in this tutorial, please feel free to post your questions down below. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com slash events.